As Mike said, I want to welcome everyone to our presentation on modern PC management for a remote workforce. And I'm really happy to see the turnout here. I'm really excited about this topic. So happy to share my knowledge on it with everyone else. As Mike said, I am Jared Cook, a senior network consultant on the IT solutions team at Sikich. A bit of background. From me, I've been working with Microsoft Cloud Services for a good part of the past 10 years, primarily with Microsoft 365 and Azure, and with a focus on helping our clients drive towards full cloud enablement. So getting all their on-premise um, infrastructure, software, and move all that into the cloud. So as we said, today I will be talking about uh, modern PC management, and that's going to be with a focus on Microsoft Endpoint Manager and how this service can help you accomplish the modern PC management solution. So while this solution I'll be highlighting on supports a fully remote workforce, it can also be used to streamline PC deployment for both hybrid and on-site workers as well. So if you're not quite there all the way in the cloud or you're still using on-premise stuff, this still applies and there still is benefit to this solution and it's something you can use now and going forward. And many organizations have IT environments that are mixed and they're using a cloud attached approach. So meaning they use a combination of both cloud and on-premise technologies. And like I said, as you move towards full cloud enablement, it's common for you to transition from on-premise only to cloud attached, and then finally to that fully cloud-based. And again, this solution is gonna showcase both of those. So before we get started and talking about the technology and endpoint manager, things like that, I wanna take a, a quick moment and touch on today's modern post-pandemic workforce and, and where we see things going with that. So uh, according to a recent study or research done by Spiceworks Ziff Davis, uh, if you haven't heard of them, they are a leading provider in technology marketing data, 25% of the workforce will be remote in a post-pandemic world. So a study they did at the height of the recent public health crisis showed that at that time, 61% of the overall workforce went remote. A breakdown of the research shows that while 74% will remain fully in the office in the near future, 6% will go fully remote and 19% will be hybrid, spending some of their time in the office and the rest remote. So it's clear the nature of work is changing. There's, there's a shift happening. And as technology continues to drive innovation, employees are looking for employers who will provide a modern workplace. Uh, the term modern workplace, Microsoft defines this as being able to work securely from anywhere on any device using tools that enhance the quality and effective, effectiveness of your work. So as you look at your business and, and you think, how can I provide this idea of a modern workplace? One of the hurdles you're going to face is how can you deploy the tools, the devices and applications that your employees need to do their work to those who are always or sometimes remote. And this is where Microsoft Endpoint Manager comes in to provide a solution for this challenge. A quick history on Microsoft Endpoint Manager. In 2019, Microsoft rebranded two existing products, Intune and Configuration Manager, to the Endpoint Manager suite of products. So besides including Intune, which is a cloud-based device manager and configuration manager, which is an on-premise management tool that also has the ability to be co-managed via the cloud uh, with Intune. Endpoint Manager also includes desktop analytics, which can give you insight into the state of your devices, Autopilot that helps with pre-configuring devices and Azure AD, which is a cloud identity provider. All of these products have been engineered to work together and they're all centrally managed from the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. So Endpoint Manager includes products that are key components to fully implementing a modern workplace. The two uh, products that we're gonna focus on today and take a deeper dive into are Intune and Autopilot and how when properly combined, these products can create a modern PC deployment and management solution that's fully powered by the Microsoft Cloud. So before we talk about pairing these two together and coming up with our PC deployment solution, let's define what capabilities each service provides. Autopilot is used to streamline the Windows out of box experience. So this is when you know you complete the you, you take a PC out of the box, a brand new PC or one you just reset, and you get those initial prompts that Windows makes you walk through 
before you get to the Windows desktop. Things like accepting the terms of service, setting a, either a local username and password or joining a domain, joining your network. All those kind of necessary evils that you have to walk through before you get to the Windows desktop. Autopilot automates all of these for your users. So you can use Autopilot to predefine all of these choices on behalf of the user and really simplify what they need to do from taking that PC out of the box or if their PC was just wiped. When a PC is registered to Autopilot, the user doesn't see any of these things. The first thing they see is a prompt to connect to the internet. After they're connected, that registered Autopilot PC will go out to the Microsoft Cloud, pull down some information and go, okay, this PC has been registered with this organization. It'll come back to the user. It will uh, first address, hey, welcome to, and, and present actually the name of your organization, and then it'll prompt them for their credentials. Once the credentials are entered, the bulk of the work done by the user to, to get to the Windows desktop is complete. Autopilot takes it from there, including the domain join and then enrolling the device in Intune. So Intune is the device management solution in the Endpoint Manager suite. Its primary features are device configurations. So these are much like uh, a modern version of group policy. It allows you to push out new applications, update and pre-configure Windows settings. And this is not only for new PCs when you're initially setting them up, but you can also use it to manage existing PCs going forward. So if there's a setting you initially configure or an application you initially deploy that maybe has been depreciated, you can go back to all those PCs in the field and remove that application or make changes to those settings. It also includes the ability to manage Windows updates on enrolled PCs. So it lets you determine your update schedule. Maybe you don't want all your Windows updates being applied on day one. Maybe you like to stage those or give some time, get, let the bugs get worked out. So Intune will allow you to set that schedule. And then it also lets you set the actions for if a PC starts falling behind in updates. So this could be as extreme as if a PC hasn't updated in two weeks from when the updates were released, the next time that PC goes online, it's just gonna force those updates upon the user of the PC, reboot the PC if it needs to, uh, of course, giving some warning, but it'll take that action for you. But say you don't wanna be that aggressive, I can also just do things like start notifying your help desk, generating tickets and things like that so that they can follow up and work, on, work with the user to get that PC up to date. And then additionally, Intune gives you the ability to remotely wipe a PC. So this is useful not only in situations where a PC might be lost or stolen, but also as an end-all be-all to troubleshooting. And uh, we're going to see how, while current times, it might seem like a drastic step to wipe a PC just because of a, an issue it's having. But once this modern PC deployment is in place, it's really not as drastic as it used to be. You don't have to spend hours reconfiguring that PC. All right, so let's look at how when we pair these together, we can get our PC deployment solution. So when you pair Autopilot with Intune, uh, as we've said, you fully automate the PC deployment. And we're going to see this uh, a live demo here towards the end. We're going to actually see the out of box experience and what it's like for a user who's using an autopilot enrolled PC. And what's really exciting about when you pair these technologies together is that this PC deployment can happen anywhere you have an internet connection. Even if you're still using an on premise Active Directory, like I mentioned at the start, you know, people are still depending on that. It might be syncing to the cloud, but on premise is still ultimately what you're managing your Active Directory from. With Autopilot, you can remotely automate joining that PC to your on-premise domain. Autopilot's going to initiate the VPN connection that's necessary for this, and then complete the domain join without any input from the user. So for a PC to work with Autopilot, it has to be pre-registered. And this can be done by your IT staff without ever having to unbox the PC. A lot of manufacturers are starting to include what's called a PKID or a product ID right on the box. You can take that number, go into the endpoint manager admin center, import it, and the PC is pre-registered. It's never left the box. Another option you have is taking a combination of the device's serial number, the manufacturer, and the model number using that through the device. 
And then there's also an option to use a PowerShell command to retrieve a unique hash that can be used for registering a device. So this is useful for pre-existing PCs. You know, maybe you, you don't want to send someone out to get the serial number and all that information from them. You don't still have the box. So using that PowerShell command can help with that. And once your device is pre-registered, uh, you will pre-assign a user to it. So this is how Intune knows what apps and configurations to do based on the Azure AD groups that user is a member of. So Azure AD or on-premise AD, um, both will work here. So by using the groups to predefine what configuration and apps are needed, it makes it very easy to have devices configured based on the user's role. So your finance team might need one suite of applications while the warehouse PCs might need something else. They might be a little bit more restricted, things like that. So just by pre-configuring all that in the admin center, pointing those settings at groups, it's very easy during the user creation to essentially give in to all the information it needs to handle the PC deployment. We oh, usually okay. have the questions at the end here, but I thought this was pretty important. We had uh, someone ask uh, with some likes on it to talk about if it's on, if this also is the same thing for a Mac. So Intune does have the ability to do some configuration on Macs to push some applications, but autopilot is unique to Windows. So the initial configuration and things like that of the Mac, uh, you'll have to manually do where when we see how autopilot uh, later on in the demo automates all the, that part of the setup. With Mac, you'll have to do the out-of-box stuff, but you can use Intune for some controls. So it's not gonna be obviously as expansive as Windows, but there is the ability to do things like enforce encryption, back up the encryption keys and some things like that, but a little bit more limited when it comes to what Windows offers. Okay, but good question. I'm focusing on Windows with this just because it brings everything together with autopilot. But you, if you do have some Macs in your fleet, they'll certainly benefit from this as well. All right, so having all these things paired together makes it possible for staff to, your IT staff to quickly deploy a PC for a new user and ship it out to them. Or how about instead of having that equipment first be shipped from your vendor, to your central office where your IT staff is going to configure it, you ship it directly to your user. So if you have a, a remote user somewhere else in the country, you have that vendor ship that equipment right to them. Now, just previously, I mentioned having to pre-register devices. You can get that information I mentioned for pre-registration, typically directly from your vendor. A lot of vendors now are able to provide you a list of PKIDs. So if you do a bulk order, they can provide you all the PKIDs or they can provide you the, you know, obviously the model, the manufacturer, but the serial number of those devices. Also some vendors, if you have a partner relationship set up with them, so they have some access to your Microsoft 365 tenant, they can take it a step further and go and pre-register all those devices in autopilot for you. So you order your PCs, your IT staff just has to go in the admin center and assign a user to those PCs and the vendor handles the middle part there. Uh, so actually on that note, let's take a look at kind of the modern workplace PC lifecycle. So let me see. So you start over here, you make your purchase from your vendor. They fulfill and deliver that order. Now, again, this can either be to a central office where IT staff is going to use autopilot in tune to streamline pre-configuring the PCs for the user or directly to the users or another remote office. So PC is received and the deployment process happens. This is where autopilot in tune are handling that deployment with a self-service or a user driven deployment method. And then the PC is ready for use. It's out there, it's in the field, it's getting used, and then maybe it runs into an issue. The user reaches out to your help desk. They spend a little bit of time on it. They determine, okay, there's some type of corruption going on with the operating system maybe. They wipe that PC, autopilot Intune kicks in, redeploys it, and then it's back to ready for use and back out into the field. And when it's out in the field here, keep in mind Intune is being used to manage that PC. It has the ability to wipe that PC if it's lost or stolen. It's managing the updates and it's keeping it current with the applications that are needed, application updates, maybe changes in security policy, things like that, and settings on the PC. 
That's all happening while the PC is remote. Unlike a traditional group policy, you need, for those changes to happen, you need line of sight back to your servers, your on-premise environment, typically through a VPN solution. With Intune, the PC just needs internet access to push those changes out. And then of course you reach the end of life and that PC is retired. All right, so I got here quickly, but I'm happy about that because I want to uh, pull up my demo and then we're going to actually talk through all the stages of autopilot and Intune and uh, get the end result of a PC deployed in about 10 minutes or less here with some applications pre-installed. So give me one moment. Let me switch over to my demo. All right, so here I've taken a couple steps out of the way. Let me touch on what those are. So the user would have seen initially a prompt to connect to their network when they first powered on that PC, either wireless or wired. This demo is wired, so it skipped that for me. And after that connection's made, some prompts are given, the standard, we're working on things in just a moment. And that's when the PC is going back to the Microsoft Cloud and seeing, okay, is this PC autopilot registered? If it is, what user is assigned to it? Is there an autopilot profile that's been assigned to it? And uh, the profile is gonna, gonna be where you can figure those things. Do you wanna accept the terms on behalf of the user? Do you wanna predefine a language? Do you wanna give a name for the PC? As far as naming the PC, you can use some variables like the serial number. There's also some other ways you can use some scripting to give a more specific name. Typically though, we see serial number being used to name the PC. And then what options do you want to have for joining the domain? Are you doing a hybrid join? Or do you have an on-premise environment or are you joining directly to Azure AD? So that information is pulled down and then the user is taken to this prompt where it will have your company name at the top there. In this case, it is Contoso. And it will prompt for a username and password, which you'll have pre-provided to the user. Let me put my username in here. Okay. so. That's basically it for the user. They get to sit back and relax, keep an eye on the PC in the background. If this was a situation where you had to reset the PC for troubleshooting, head out to lunch, but autopilot's going to take over from here and do its thing. And the next thing the user is going to see is the windows desktop. Now you have a couple options at this point. It could take you directly to the windows desktop and the user could start using the PC immediately applications and configurations will happen in the background from there or you can get taken to an enrollment status page and that's where we're at right now and this is again something uh, that you can pre-configure in the endpoint manager admin center and the enrollment status page is going to show these three different stages that have to get completed before the pc is taken to the windows desktop so right now we are in the device preparation stage so this is the stage that's going to do TPM configuration. If there is a TPM installed, it's gonna do the domain join. It's going to enroll in Intune, and then it's going to install the Intune management extension. And this is a service that'll run in Windows, which is used for deploying applications, deploying the configurations, and all those things that Intune does. The next step is going to be the device setup stage. The device setup and the account setup stage are essentially the same. What is dependent upon here is how you've configured your applications or your configurations to apply. When you set those up in the admin center, you can either target a device or a group of devices or a group of users. And there's uh, some reasons why you might wanna do that based on device or users. Typically, we see it at the user level. That's how things are deployed. And in the case of this demo, that's how it's being deployed as well. So it's just checking, seeing if there's any device level set up, and then it should quickly move on to account setup. What happens during the stage is the security policies are applied, the applications are installed, and that's if you've configured your enrollment status page to require applications to be installed before the device reaches the Windows desktop. Typically IT staff, before a, a user starts using a PC, they at least want some level of security applied to that PC. So what you can do here is have your antivirus automatically installed. Maybe if you're using an RMM tool, something for remotely connecting to the PC, have that pre-installed. 
or you could have all of the applications that uh, are being deployed pre-installed here and then that way when the user gets to the desktop everything's done it's ready to go otherwise if you install some it will install those take them to the desktop and then the rest of the applications will install on the background typically becoming available within the hour depending on the size of the applications and things you're pushing besides those it's also configuring any connectivity profiles a vpn wi-fi or any certificate profiles needed and again so to help see between the two and how the two services are working together so autopilot is facilitating this enrollment status page intune's actually doing the configuration intune is pushing the apps configuring windows things like that but autopilot is preventing the pc from getting to the desktop until those things are done so this probably will be done in a couple minutes here so we're not just staring at it and watching the wheels turn give me just a moment i've got a Another slide I'd like to share, we can look at some of the real world uh, benefits that we're seeing our clients gain from using the solution. And then once it is done deploying, we'll go and we'll take a look at our desktop. So as I've mentioned throughout this, besides being used to deploy PCs to remote staff, this solution is being used by both cloud only and on-premise clients to do bulk laptop deployments, think ordering. 10 laptops and pre-configuring them, 100 laptops. You know, once you have everything set up in the background, the process to, to kick off the deployment is as easy as what I just showed you there of powering up, entering a password and letting it run with that internet connection. So by having your apps and your Windows settings pre-deployed there, pre-configured based on the groups the users are in. So during the user setup, you'll join them or add them to various groups. That really reduces the lead time you need to get a new machine ready to hand off to a new employee. Sometimes notice comes through that, hey, someone's starting tomorrow. Someone started today. No longer do you have to worry about needing half a day to set that PC up and get all those apps installed. You get the user set up, you log in on autopilot and then let that run. And typically, especially if you're doing that from the office, the, the faster the internet connection, the faster that process is going to go. Same day, usually though, though a PC is ready within an hour or so. And then, as I mentioned, besides using this for new PCs, Intune gives those benefits to all of your existing PCs. So systematically deploy new applications and settings, everything that's already out in the field. Now, there is a process to go back and Intune enroll your existing PCs. With Autopilot, that's happening during the setup, but there is a way to go back and, at a scale, enroll all of your existing PCs into Intune. I quickly do reset and rebuilds. Touched on that. That This is becoming actually a growing trend, I'd say, in the, the troubleshooting step. Once you're fully there, once you have everything configured to where that PC is going to redeploy itself, reinstall everything, your users are saving their data to a cloud location such as Microsoft OneDrive, SharePoint Teams, things like that, and they're not dependent on local storage for their information. You don't have any concerns about wiping that PC, letting it rebuild, and then letting that information get pulled back from the... We're seeing this allow a lot of clients start to target talent nationwide and globally because they no longer have to worry about this hurdle of how are they going to get the PC deployed, deal with troubleshooting in the future, things like that. And so overall, just reducing visits needed to the office by remote workers for assistance with IT related issues. And my demo just booted into Windows. Let me go back over to there and we'll see what we've ended up with here. And let's see, I'd say almost less than 10 minutes time there. Hey, Jared, I do have some questions for you if we want to. Yeah, let me, if I could walk through just really quick what we have on our desktop here, and then I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Beautiful. So this demo, it was light in the sense of not letting it run for 30 minutes, but what we've done here is we've pre-deployed Adobe Acrobat Reader, Google Chrome, and then Microsoft Office. So you can see we have Excel, Word, Outlook, everything's all on here. We've also set it to pre-configure OneDrive. So we can see down here right now, OneDrive is signing in. It's not prompting the user to sign in like it traditionally would. Automatically signed. It's set to reconfigure the known folder locations, so the desktop documents, things like that. All those get reconfigured to OneDrive. So if the user previously had anything saved on their desktop, and they were set up that way before, 
all those files would start pulling back right now from OneDrive. Same with documents, things like that. So again, this was very light, but you, you need to think think bigger on this. You could pre-do some branding, have your, your company background be deployed, pre-configure what your start menu looks like, what your taskbar shortcuts are, and then of course, install any application that you can think of there as well as apply your security settings. If, if applications were continued to be installed, you can set it so that the user either gets notifications in the notification center here about that happening, or that it's fully silent and they just get installed. And if there's a, a desktop short con configured, it'll just show up or it'll show up on the start menu once it's available. Okay, Mike, any questions? I'm happy to answer. Sure thing, thanks, Jared. We have a question, does Intune update third-party software? It does, yeah, and how that would look is that within Intune, within Intune in the admin center, when you're configuring that application to deploy, if an update comes out and that application isn't self-updating, you can deploy that updated application and tell it what other application it's going to supersede. So if you have version one that's getting deployed of your application and now version two comes out, you can figure it and say, hey, this is going to supersede version one. And when it's going to deploy, if version one is detected, it will remove and install that new version. And it also depends on, on how that application updates. If it's able to just run an MSI or something like that to update over top, you would just deploy the update itself. It's flexible there. You can set it so it's replacing the old application for new builds, and then it's also updating existing builds, doing an in-place update. But absolutely. And to speak on the applications you can deploy, if your application comes prepackaged in an MSI, it's very easy to upload that MSI to Intune and Intune kind of fills out a lot of the information it needs to deploy that application for you. But if it's a traditional executable, it's a Win32 application, Intune supports that as well. It does that by taking the installer and, and packaging that into a new file type, Intune Win file. You upload that to Intune, you, you give some information about what command to run to install the application, how to identify that the application has been installed, and then it goes from there. So you're really not limited by the type of application. Uh, also, uh, Microsoft Business Store, very easy to deploy apps from there. I've seen this deploy a lot of legacy applications successfully, even applications as complex as the older ones where you have to install this base version and then you have to install three other updates because they haven't made a new base installer for it and you have to do those in order it's possible to configure intune to do all that systematically install things in the correct order based on dependencies and things like that so i've, I've worked with this in some situations uh, where it's taken a complex line of business application installation of something that your IT staff has to refer to a documentation on how to make sure they do it properly and automate that entire process to where it, it installs as if it's a modern application. Right, more questions, lots and lots of questions. We really appreciate it. Oh, okay, it, all right. We've got, with managing updates, are you able to uninstall them from Intune? Currently, you cannot. You can delay update packages and things like that. Actually, I shouldn't say that. You, you can be very creative with Intune. So what's not available directly in the interface, you'd have to do it at a more advanced level, but you can certainly actually target specific app update packages and uninstall those. You would just have to use some scripting, something like PowerShell, to do that but yes it's possible it's not as straightforward as you know, maybe wsus is if you're using that to manage your updates in-house but it's certainly possible and it's something most it staff are, are able to handle can it manage byod devices it can it certainly can and when you configure your profiles within intune it will identify devices as if they're corporate or if they're personal. It kind of makes this, it, it, it does this based off some factors it pulls from that device, type of Windows installed, a version of Windows installed, if it's domain joined or not, when it first gets enrolled. But you can also manually set that. And then, you know, you can target if, whether it's a corporate or personal device and what actions it takes based on that. So yes, it does support BYOD. Excellent. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. And we'll send that out in the follow-up. 
email as well. Does Intune integrate with JMF? Jam? Am I pronouncing that? Boy, the acronym is familiar to me, but yeah. it's not coming immediately to mind, but I'm happy to see yeah. if my thoughts on it are correct. The JAMF is for iPad management. Apple development service looks like. So I don't have specific experience on it with that solution, but I, I right before you asked that question, Mike, I was going to say that while we're looking at Intune in the sense of managing Windows devices, we also, uh, thanks to a question earlier, talked about it managing Mac devices. It also is a full mobile device management solution where you can manage both iOS and Android devices as well. And it gives those same features as Windows of managing what applications are, are getting installed on there, what settings are in place. So I don't know if it would work with JAMF or JAMF um, mm -hmm. hand in hand, but it, because I don't know about that solution, but it, it can hold its own managing Apple and Android devices as a standalone service. Maybe if that's what that's doing for you, this might be an alternative to that. And with the licensing being included in a lot of various Microsoft 365 licenses, this could be a cost saving. If you're paying for a different solution to manage those devices, you can use Intune for both managing your Windows and your Apple, Android, and Mac devices. Excellent. Uh, can Intune deploy monthly Microsoft patches to the to those endpoints? Yes, it does, and you can you can set how those are scheduled to deploy. So whether you want those to be deployed as soon as they become available, whether you want to stagger those, it handles both monthly, and then there's a, another set of settings for the larger biannually feature updates. So you can manage those separately. If you want to be more aggressive with the monthly, make sure they're deployed immediately and installed within you know two weeks. Whereas the feature updates, you want to delay those a little bit, you know, maybe not enforce them at all. They're separate and there's a lot of options for managing how those are deployed. Excellent. Kathy's wondering, uh, can personal information be separated from business and only wipe business data? Yes, sorry. I, I had to think of, of the specific use case, but yes, that is possible. It takes some configuration, but yes, if it's a BYO, the device, it is possible to configure things in a way to where if a person's offboarding, you just pull off the, your business applications from it. Excellent. Thanks everyone for their questions. Lots of engagement here today. Can you clarify whether Autopilot is an imaging solution? The PC must already have Windows Enterprise pre-installed and registered to Intune for Autopilot to kick in. Enterprise isn't a requirement. The demo we ran today that was using Windows Professional. Think of it as a, an alternative to an imaging solution, a more modern imaging solution, right? Because with a standard imaging solution, you have your golden image and then you're building packages, but it's dependent upon that golden image getting pushed out, or you're maybe you're doing everything directly within that golden image and just updating that, repackaging the image and redeploying it. With Intune, it's you're breaking it out. It's first, you're not dependent on a golden image. Any version of Windows that's coming pre-installed on that PC, professional or enterprise is going to work. And then you're just taking that out of box image and then deploying the configurations and the apps separately. So instead of having to, to keep up with repacking a golden image, you're just keeping up with the individual applications and the settings and they're broken out from that image. I, I've worked a lot with um, imaging solutions and I consider this a much better reality for an IT staff to, to maintain. Excellent. Ryan's wondering if Windows 11 is fully supported yet. It is, yes. And also uh, Windows 365 is supported as well, Microsoft's virtual desktop environment. So if you were, were using that, all the applications that you have configured, all the settings you have configured to deploy to your Windows physical PCs apply to Windows 365 as well. Is the computer name and domain also pre-configured? It is, yes. The domain join is pre-configured in Endpoint Manager Center. And if it's either going to Azure AD join or on-premise domain join the machine, I'll say the on-premise domain join, there's a little bit more hurdles in setting it up, but it's certainly possible. 
and supported. And again, that's supported remotely as well. And then the naming of the PC you can do as well on predef. Right now, the only variable you really have to work with is the serial number. Now you can um, preface that with something else and then append the serial number at the end. But you can also, like I said, you can push PowerShell out with Intune. So you can do a lot with PowerShell. You could originally name the PC something, but then once Intune it's enrolled with Intune, you can execute a script and rename that PC, whatever you'd like. I've seen that deployed and it works well. It's just, it's a little bit more advanced to set up, but it's certainly possible. Excellent. Let's see, what else do we have? Can you force employees to use purely cloud-based storage so that they don't use their local storage in reference to quick re- Yes, you, you, can re you can apply restrictions on the PC. And so you could certainly prevent saving to certain folders on the C drive and things like that. And then like I showed and mentioned with my demo, I had it pre-configure OneDrive to use the known file location. So when you turn that on OneDrive, what it does is it redirects your desktop, your documents, your pictures, all those default folders in a user's profile, it redirects those to OneDrive. So you, it would be something like putting that in place and then restricting saving kind of outside of those folders. You know, take a little upkeep because some applications need to save elsewhere, but it's certainly possible. Excellent. Uh, Mark's wondering, are you also able to configure the default apps to start out? Yes. Yes. So, so you can predefine, uh, you know, what your PDF reader is, what um, your mail client is for EML files or things like that. All those settings that you can set in Windows on the default associations and default programs, you can have Intune set that on the device for you. To deploy a remote PC with only internet, can you get direct access client settings deployed in order to connect to internal network? I believe so. I, I know exactly what you're speaking of. I don't have any personal hands-on experience with that, but from a technical standpoint and thinking of the capabilities of Intune, I think you could pre-configure direct access. But with the I'll say with the with the domain join for on-premise domain, how that what that depends on is a client VPN that supports the ability to make a connection before you're actually signed into Windows. So a, a VPN solution that allows you to connect from the sign-in screen, if it's able to do that, it would support doing that on-premise domain join remotely. If you're already using Office 365, this is a question from Matthew, at the E3 level, what licensure is needed to add Intune for device management? I believe it is the, the mobility E3 and security license, I believe. Justin's wondering, uh, can we use Google LDAP in place of Azure AD? No, it is going to depend on your user objects being synced into Azure AD. So. If you're fully on premise right now, you, know, you do have to use like the Azure AD Connect tool to get your user objects into Azure AD, and it is dependent on that as the identity provider. Excellent. Can just lost that question there. Uh, there was a question about using if it's uh, compatible with Okta, OKTA, multi um, platform, it looks like. Yeah, your first one. I again know the service you're speaking of, but not its ins and outs. Single sign on. So, assuming this seems, I think this question is similar to the Google LDAP, I believe. And so, again, it's going to depend on Azure AD being your identity provider. So, it may be possible to integrate this kind of after the initial setup. Um, I'm not sure that would take some review, but that's certainly something, if that's a, a requirement for you, something we could research more and see what the possibilities are. Jared, I want to thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to everyone for joining. Like I said, this is a, a technology that's really exciting to me. The places I've seen it in use, we get really good feedback on it. And for some of those harder questions and things like that, yeah, please reach out and can look at your particular environment and see how it will fit in for you. Excellent. Thanks, Jared. I think we will end here. Appreciate everybody's time and we'll see you next time. Great. Thank you.